thanks so much for being with us. So just how significant is the killing of al-Baghdadi in the fight against Islamic State? It's significant, but it won't end the fight. I mean, what, what we need to understand is he was not the founder of ISIS. Let's understand that. That fellow's name was Zarqawi. He was killed some years ago, and yet it's still a, it still has lethal force. It doesn't have territory, caliphate, but it has lethal, lethal force. And the other thing it has is it's not a top-down organization. It's loosely affiliated horizontal groups, which means that one can act in the name of ISIS without getting approval from Big Daddy. And so if we have taken off the top guy, which we did, and I think our forces, both uh, military and intelligence, deserve enormous credit and uh, applause for the president for authorizing the mission, uh, but that does not mean we have ended uh, their their uh, in instinct and, and interest in attacking. And it also means that there could be revenge attacks to revenge the death of uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. But does it prove the president's point, the killing of al-Baghdadi, that the U.S. can fight terrorism in Syria without having U.S. boots on the ground? Well, we already were fighting terrorism without boots on the ground. Nobody was talking about removing a land force of 50,000 troops. We had an effective land force, our, our allies, the Kurds. What we were doing was training and equipping and, uh, and advising. Uh, and we had very few people in Syria, about 1,000 total, uh, very small loss of life, um, very few in this, in this safety zone, but they were keeping the peace. And one of the things that I find uh, enormously uh, concerning is, at least as reported, the president was aware of this mission before he ordered our few troops out of Syria. And in order to accomplish the mission, number one, we had to uh, move our, our, our point of departure from Turkey, so it's reported, uh, to uh, Iraq, which meant that the travel distance for the helicopters was over the entire landmass of, of Syria, where they were taking ground fire. Uh, we had to move that, and we had to accelerate the timing, which gave us much less time to plan, plan meticulously. Bottom line, however, in spite of all this, we executed the mission flawlessly, flawlessly for which our military and intelligence assets de deserve enormous praise. What do you make of the fact that the Russians were informed about the planned raid, but not Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House? Well, two things about that. First of all, we wanted to deconflict uh, any of our troop movements, or, or actually air, aircraft movements, with anything they were doing. Uh, it would have been horrible to have these American helicopters traveling over Syria uh, be shot down by some Russian helicopters. That was not the point. So the Russians were notified. Anyone else in airspace was notified. That had to happen. That is typical. Uh, after the mission, I'm not exactly clear uh, what Vladimir Putin was told. And I, I do believe the so-called Gang of Eight, which I used to belong to as the senior Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, uh, should have been notified and wasn't. Jane Harmon, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Laura.